Hi, I'm Sarah Lindsay, and this is a full vinyasa flow for those days that you're a little bit short on time. So we will start ourselves in an all fours position, hands and knees, pressing to the hands and the knees equally so there's no collapsing in the wrists. And then as you inhale, spread your sit bones, arch through your back and open up through your chest into cow. And then as you exhale, try to initiate the action from the tailbone becoming heavy and tucking down. And then allow it to drag every vertebrae of your spine and then try to bring the tip of your brain, the tip of your head towards the space between your thighs into cat curl. And then again, inhale, arch through your back. Articulate every single spine, spread the arm bones apart. And then as you exhale, round. And then just continue to move through these two shapes. Try to follow the rhythm of your breath so that they move with equipoise. So there's a full breath for each shape as you exhale rounding. Don't be concerned if your pace is different to mine. That's okay. Just move through these shapes. Just lubricating through your spine. And then when you're ready, tuck your toes, lift your bum, downward dog. Press into the hands and the toes firmly, so broaden your fingers. Try not to bend the knuckles of your hands, but press firmly through the full imprint. And then soften your shoulders as much as you can, and pull the heels both down and back towards the back of the room. Inhale, extend your right leg. And then bend your right knee, bringing your right heel towards your left bum into a kind of open hip split dog. And then bring the right knee towards your nose. Step the foot between your hands. Drop your left knee, drop your left toes. Inhale, raise both arms. Try to melt the left thigh forwards towards your right heel, but without just fully collapsing into your pelvis. Release both hands, left foot next to right, forward fold. Inhale, raise both arms, look to the thumb. And then exhale, fold. Bend the knees as much as you need to, any time you need to. Inhale, look forwards, extend through every vertebrae of your spine, from crown of the head to sit bones. So lead with the crown of the head, not with the eyebrows, so just look directly down. Step back with your right foot. Drop your right knee, drop your right toes, and then again, inhale, raise both arms. Hug your right knee towards the left heel. And then hug both of the inseams of your thighs towards one another. So you feel the outer hips ever so slightly switched on. Release both hands. Step back, downward facing dog. And then slide forwards to a plank position. Bend your elbows, chaturanga. If this is ever too much, drop the knees. Otherwise, inhale. Slide forwards onto the fronts of the feet. Micro bend your elbows and then project the sternum forwards, up dog. Tuck the toes, downward dog. Inhale, raise your left leg, bend the knee, open the hip, squeeze the left knee nice and high, and then bring the knee towards the nose. Step the foot between the hands. Drop right knee, drop right toes, inhale, raise both arms. Hug the inseams of your thighs in, melt the right thigh. Release both palms. Right foot next to left, forward fold. Inhale, raise the arms, lift to the thumbs. And then exhale, all the way down. Inhale, lengthen from crown of the head, not from eyebrows. So you can look directly down at the front of your mat. Step back with the left foot. Drop the knee, drop the toes. Inhale, raise both arms. Release both palms. Tuck the left toes, step back, down dog. And then journey forwards to a plank position. Optional ways to drop knees, otherwise bend elbows, chuck Durango. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, extend your right leg. Bring the knee towards the nose, step the foot between the hands. And then shuffle your left foot back so it's a nice wide stance. Come onto the fingertips and then press firmly into the full sole of the right foot. And then bring your left foot down as if your legs were in warrior two. So the left toes are in at a slightly kind of turned in angle, but keep your chest forwards. Take an inhale, 
And then on your exhale, lengthen the crown of the head. This time as you inhale, windmill left arm, semicircle open, warrior two. Strong through the legs. Then take an inhale, extend the arms. Exhale, fingers down, pivot from the ball of the left foot back to a low lunge. You can hover the fingers if you want to make it more challenging. Drop the left heel, warrior two legs. Inhale, windmill the arms open, warrior two. Inhale here. Exhale, square hips, low lunge. You can pivot the fingers. Drop the foot first, inhale, open wide. Exhale, low lunge. Last time, drop the left foot. Windmill the left arm open, warrior two. Breathe into the side waist. And then extend the arms firmly away from one another as if someone was holding you wrist to wrist. And then feel the inseams of your thighs move away from the central axis of your pelvis. So you can really feel the bones extending out of the pelvic ball. Take an inhale and then straighten your right leg. Take your right hand down to your shin or to the ground and then squeeze your heels towards one another as though they were on a slippery surface and trying to meet in the middle. Take the left arm over your left ear and then soften your right shoulder. And then feel as though someone was pulling you by your left wrist all the way to the front of the room so you get this nice big stretch through the left side waist. Ground down through the little toe side of your left foot and find that internal traction. And then move as if you are holding a hand weight so the arm is heavy. Start to draw big circles through the left arm. Make them as big as you can. Try not to tighten up through the right arm. So don't let the right shoulder kind of hug up to the right ear. Keep it soft as you continue to move through this circular motion through the left arm. And you're trying to move as if the outer atmosphere was made of honey or water and it was difficult to move through. And then when you're ready, change direction, go the other way. Good, left arm over, left ear. Bend your right knee on top of the right ankle and then either rest your right arm on your right thigh or if you have the flexibility, the hand can come to the mat. If you have to be up on the fingertips, it's better to be on the forearm. And then soften your left shoulder and extend. Breathe into the side waist and then feel as if you're pushing your right knee away using your right armpit so you can snuggle it in or the forearm if you're on the forearm. Keep the feet as they are, so try not to bend the back knee. And then release the left hand, and then without moving your legs, walk only your arms to the front left corner of your mat. And then either TP hands or flat palms, press and resist the ground, lift your hips one inch. Push your knee to the little toe side of your right foot, and then feel your outer hip engage. Soften your shoulders, and then without moving your throat, Imagine growing the crown of your head towards the space between your thumbs. Without moving your legs, bring your hands to the middle. Take your right hand to your right thigh and feel like you can press the thigh away. Keep pressing into the left hand. Now lift into the left armpit like you're holding a golf ball in the armpit so you're not collapsing in the wrist. Keep pushing the right knee away. Release your right hand, straighten your right leg, turn your right toes in, Pazarita. Press into all four corners of both feet, lift up through your knees, keep your legs straight, but then walk your hands forwards without bringing your hips forwards of your heels. And then feel these two lines of resistance, press into the ground with the hands and feet. Soften through the back of the eyebrows, the back of the throat, the teeth and the knees but press into the heels and lift the sit bones. So from here, take a big inhale and then walk your hands forwards to the front of your mat. Turn the right toes forwards and pivot on the back heel. 
and then take your right hand inside your right foot and heel toe your right foot to the right side of your mat. So you're in a wide stance of the legs. Press firmly into the hands and then kick your left heel back and feel like you're pulling your left hip forward. So we want to try and access this front left hip crease. Now to the best of your ability, don't worry about how straight the leg gets. Just take an inhale, press forwards with the chest and as you exhale, you can come onto TP hands if you need more space and try to straighten the front leg. Don't worry if it only straightens a little bit. Those of us more flexible might even come onto the heel of the right back. Good, take an inhale and then exhale, bend the knee, press the chest forwards. And then again, inhale, straighten. Exhale. Good again, inhale. And then exhale. Good again, one more. Inhale. Exhale, bend the front knee. Drop your back knee and tuck the back toes. And then press into the hands and then let your right toes turn out like 10 degrees. So they're facing like one or two o'clock on the clock. And then pressing into your left hand, bend your left knee, but pull your left hip forward still. Reach back with your right hand, make a semicircle underneath the toes. And then round the toes around your index finger. Pressing into your right foot, some of us that are more flexible might come onto the little knife edge, the pinky side knife edge of the right foot. And then pull the left foot back to open through the chest. Take an inhale. And then exhale, press back even more. And then this time, squeeze the heel towards your bum and stretch the quad. So eventually the heel will come towards the bum, soften your right shoulder, pull your left hip forwards. Those of us that are more flexible might even want to come down onto the left forearm, but it's just an invitation, not an instruction. Good, and then don't just let go of the left foot and let it spring back. Gently release the foot. Tuck the back toes, lift the back knee. Press into your hands, step back, downward facing dog. Slide forwards to a plank position. Always the option to drop the knees, otherwise bend elbows, chaturanga. Slide forwards onto the toes, pull the shoulders back. And then downward facing dog. Left side, inhale, extend your left leg. Bring the knee towards the nose, step the foot between the palms. Come onto the fingertips and then shuffle your right foot back so you've got a nice wide stance. And then feel like you're pressing your chest forwards. And then look back, drop your back foot like your feet were in warrior two. And then move like you're moving through water as you move your right arm, semicircle open, warrior two. Pull the hip bones apart, tuck the tailbone, press down into the surfaces of your feet. Good, pivot from the back foot. Fingers either side of your left foot, you can hover them to make it more challenging. Take an inhale, drop the right foot forward, back. Take your right arm back, semicircle open. Hands down, pivot. Inhale, open, warrior two. Last time, pivot. Inhale, open wide. Warrior two, pull the thighs apart. Extend the arms, look over the front middle finger. Bend the left knee deeply. Allow the left thigh to slightly externally rotate away from the pelvis. And then straighten your left leg. Press into the feet, pull the heels towards one another so the hamstrings are active. Take your left hand down to your left shin and then your right arm over your right ear. Soften your left shoulder. And then again, start drawing those big semicircles as if you are holding a weight in the right hand. So you're not just kind of throwing the arm around, but instead you're moving with integrity, initiating the action from the incision of your armpit crease. Then you're moving through the thickness of the air to move the synovial fluid in the joint of the shoulder. When you already change the direction of your arm, go the other way. Try not to let your left shoulder snuggle up into your left ear, but keep that whole left side of the neck spacious. Good, extend the arm over the ear. 
soften through the throat. And then from here, lift yourself up. Good. Turn the left toes. So keep the left leg where it is. Bend the knee again. I must miss a really important section. And then take your left forearm to the left thigh or the hand inside the foot. You can shuffle the back foot forwards if it feels like that, let, that extension is too much to maintain. And then press the left knee away and extend your right arm over your right ear. The little finger comes down towards the mat. You can even look at your big toe or your right little finger. And then feel like you can breathe so deeply into your left lung that you can corkscrew the chest open so the left lung and the left ribs are underneath the right. Keep pressing into the outer edge of your back foot. Keep the legs exactly as they are. Release the right hand and then walk the hands towards the front right corner of your mat. You can come onto TP hands or press into the palms, whatever feels most comfortable. And then lift your hips one inch, pull your left thigh out to the left and then press away. So you're trying to activate the muscle outside of the left hip. You might feel the inner adductor switch on. Walk the hands to the middle of your mat without moving the legs. Press into the right hand, press the ground away. Left hand to the left thigh, not to the knee. Press the left thigh away. Good. Press into the feet firmly. Try not to collapse into the right shin or the right knee. Push the hips apart. And you should feel that fire in the left thigh. I certainly do. Good. Straighten the left leg. Turn all ten toes to face the same direction. Take an inhale through your spine. And then as you exhale, fold from the hips. Press into the hands or the forearms, whichever variation of preserita you prefer. Keep pressing into the feet, and as you allow gravity to receive the weight of your body meeting at the soles of your feet, simultaneously so you feel the earth's rebounding force pressing back so that you feel light and weightless even as you press down. Press into the hands. Walk the hands towards your front left foot. Turn the left toes forwards, come to the ball of your right foot. Heel toe the left foot to the left side, turn the toes out so they're around 10 or 11 o'clock. Press into the hands. Kick the right heel back, pull your hips forwards. Good, take an inhale. And then exhale, straighten the left leg as much as you can. Some of us might even flex the foot if that makes the stretch a little bit deeper for you. Inhale, press forwards, bend the knee. Exhale, straighten. Inhale. Exhale. Good. Inhale, bend. Exhale, straighten. Inhale, bend. And then exhale, straighten. Good. This time, bend. Drop the back knee, drop the back toes. You can even come onto the little toes out of your foot, but only if the knee tracks still in line with the foot. So not if the knee stays what it is and the foot comes out. It has to stay in one nice line. Press into your right hand, bend your right knee, take your left arm back, semicircle around the toes. And then use the force of your foot to pull back and open the left shoulder. Try to press into the right hand and then feel like you're holding something in the right armpit so you don't collapse into the wrist. So wrist injuries are a really common yoga injury because we don't activate the muscles of the arms and we apply too much weight of the body into just the wrist. Bend the knee, squeeze the heel towards the bum. And then you can pull your hips forwards. Some of us that are a little more flexible might even drop onto your forearm, but only if that truly takes you to a manageable variation of the stretch. Good. Don't let the leg just spring back. With the control, release. 
press into the hands, tuck the back toes, lift the back knee. Step back, downward facing dog. Option, skip your vinyasa or move forwards to plank. Bend elbows. Inhale, dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Good, from here, bring the big toes to touch and then raise your right leg and take your right foot behind your left so the little toes touch. So the legs are crossed with the left shin in front. And then walk the feet apart and drop the knees. Good. And then as you press back, you should be in cow face pose. If this is just not manageable with the knees stacked, you can straighten your bottom leg. Press down through your sit bones. You can also sit on a pillow or a cushion from your sofa or from your bed. That will elevate your pelvis a little bit. So whichever variation feels best for you. From here, extend your right arm, bend your right elbow, take the hand between the shoulder blades as if you were scratching between your shoulder blades. And then use your left arm to pull back. As you do this, if you feel that you arch into your back and your ribs move apart, try to knit the ribs together and breathe into the lower back and the kidneys. So you are full through the full circumference of your trunk rather than shallow in the belly. Some of us might even take our left arm back and reach for the right hand. And again, only if this takes you into a better variation of the posture for you. Pull the shoulders apart away from one another so that the collarbones, the handlebar shaped bones at the front of your chest move apart. Take an inhale and then as you exhale, trace the right elbow forwards only if that feels good. So if you move into some, a variation that I say and you think it brings you out of a stretch that felt good and it's too difficult to maintain, then just take it back a step. Good, lift up. Bring your left foot to the ground, left knee up. And then raise your right arm, twist to the left side and look over your left ear. If you have a bind in your practice, turning the right thumb down, rotating from the armpit crease, taking the right arm under your left thigh and reaching for your left hand, you're welcome to. If again that just confuses you or takes you out of a twist that felt good, don't do it. Press into both sit bones, particularly the right one. Lengthen through your spine, almost like there was a hand between your shoulder blades pressing you forwards and then gently resist into that hand so that there's muscular force around the trunk. Take an inhale and then reach back with your left shoulder. Twist from the spine, not just from the neck. So I like to keep my chin in line with the middle of my chest so that I know the stretch is coming from my shoulders and my spine rather than just my throat like this. And then release. Release the legs, cross the shins, make your way back, downward facing dog. Stay in down dog, or if you want to move to a vinyasa, slide forwards to a plank. Bend elbows. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Bring the big toes to touch. Raise the left leg. This time, take the left leg behind the right. Little toes touch. Walk the feet apart, and then drop down onto the knees. Again, if this feels Really shifty for your knees, straighten the left leg, the bottom leg. Otherwise, if it feels comfortable with or without a pillow under your sit bones, stay here. Good, again, breathe into the full circumference of your belly and your chest. And then raise your left arm. Bend your left elbow and then press back with the left elbow with the right hand. And then breathe into the back of the kidneys so that you stay inflated and buoyant on the inside. Some of us may even take our right arm back and reach for our left hand, but again, only if that feels good. If you feel like you're really close, but you can't quite reach, then you can grab hold of your T-shirt or use a strap or something just to help make your arms longer. Good, inhale, press back into the left elbow with the back of your head. And then if it feels comfortable, fold forwards. If you feel as though it's just not possible, then you're also welcome to release the arms if you'd prefer the fold.
Good, lift up. Release the arms. Bring your right foot to the mat, right knee up, left arm up. Take the left elbow outside of your right thigh, and then your right hand behind you and twist. Again, if you want to try the bind, the left thumb comes down, rotate from the armpit, and then bring the arm under your right thigh. And then eventually reach back for your right hand. And again, if your arms don't feel long enough yet, you can use a strap or a belt. And then take an inhale, lengthen through the spine. And then as you exhale, twist from your right shoulder and your right ribs, not from your neck. And each time you inhale, breathe so fully into your lungs that they expand from left to right, top to bottom. Like they fill, fill the whole trunk. And then as you exhale, feel them cushioning either side of your heart. Good, release. Come back to the center. Walk the legs forwards. And then we'll roll down onto our backs. Knees bent, feet hip distance apart. And then press firmly into your feet. Lengthen through the nape of the neck so the chin kind of comes towards your chest like a double chin. And then press into your feet, lift up through your pubic bone and roll up through the vertebrae of your spine. Some of us might shuffle our arms underneath us, maybe interlace the fingers and shuffle a little bit more. And then pull the hips and the chest up and press your knees forwards. And then imagine almost as though you had a buck between your legs and you were squeezing it in place so that the knees don't move apart. Some of us may want to stay here. Otherwise you always have the option to stay high through the hips. Take the hands either sides of your ears, broaden your fingers so you have a large surface area. Pull the elbows together so the shoulders are engaged. And then press into your feet and your hands and lift up into upward bow. Press into the hands and the feet. And again, as you feel the force of gravity receive the weight of your body, feel Earth's gentle rebound force pressing back so you can press higher through the hips. Good. Bring your chin to the chest. Roll down through your back. Bring the feet together, knees apart. If you ever want to repeat any of the sections, you can just pause and carry on. Or if you feel pulled towards continuing in a different direction, if that felt like it warmed you up for some deeper stretches in your hips or your back. You're always invited to continue your practice on your own or replay any bits that felt useful. Otherwise, if you just have a short amount of time, sometimes half an hour is just enough to get the hotness of your blood moving around your body. Good, bring the knees to the chest, give them a nice squeeze. If you'd like to stay here at home or wherever you are for Savasana, then by all means, do so. Otherwise, if you're with me, come and sit yourself up. Come into any comfortable cross-leg position. Bring your palms together. Take a few deep breaths. Just let yourself arrive back. In the present moment, sitting on your mat. And as always, I thank you for your hard work, your devotion, and your dedication. Namaste.